The Lord be with you. We are glad to have everyone here this morning. It's good to see everybody's faces. Um, we have just a couple of announcements to share with y'all. Um, we have had all of the gifts picked up off the angel tree, but we can still take some gift cards for those families. Um, so if you still want to um, get something for either the Haven House family or the other family we are um, adopting for this Christmas, you can get some gift cards. Um, and bring either the gift cards or your unwrapped gifts back to the church by next Sunday. Um, and you can see our plans for Christmas Eve. We are going to have a 3 to 4 p.m. drop-in communion in the sanctuary. Um, and then at 5 o'clock, we will have our Christmas Eve service in here. And we do ask that anytime you come indoors that we wear a mask to love our neighbors. Now, if you will stand, me, stand and join with me our call to worship. Come and rejoice in God. Sing praises to God who blesses our lives. In the midst of troubles and stress, God is near, offering compassion. Our hope is in the Lord. Let all the people praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you can be seated as we listen to the recording of the first Noel. today. I welcome you to church and at this time I'd like to invite the Miller family to come forward to light our Advent candles. Good morning. Today we we will be lighting the pink candle. Luke 2 verses 10 and 11 says, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people today in the town of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. On the night Jesus was born, the angels appeared to the shepherds and delivered the most wonderful news. They let, they let the shepherds know that joy had come into the world. He was here. He, he had been born, and that was for sure a joyful thing.
The angels said this joy was for all people. They didn't tell the shepherds this news so they could keep it quiet. They didn't tell the shepherds not to tell anyone else. They said it was good news of great joy for all people. When you have the true joy of Jesus, then you cannot help but spread his joy to others. His joy will be so visible in you and others will see it. It will be heard through the words you speak. It will be seen in your actions. It will be seen all over your face. It is hard to contain the joy of the Lord. Our job as Christians is to spread this joy. We are to go out and make Jesus known. Shout it from the mountaintops. Sing it from the rooftops. Write about it. Talk about it. Go and tell others the great news of Jesus Christ. Today, let the light of joy shine in your life. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, help us to share your joy with others. Make your joy so visible in our lives that others will come in to know you. Though us remind us that your joy is for everyone and give us the courage to share your name. In Jesus' name, amen. As we celebrate the joy that Christ brings, I invite you to stand and to take a moment to pass the peace of Christ with those around you. Let us stand. Well, good morning, guys. It's good to see all of you up here. Okay, what are some things that make you happy? Yes. Getting good food, yes, that makes me happy. Yes. Your family, yep. Our family makes us happy, yes. Oh, your sister, do you feel the same way? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, mama makes you happy. Yep. Anybody else? So did you know people love being happy, right? We don't love to be sad. Jesus, yep, Jesus makes us happy. Um, people do all kinds of things to make themselves happy. They watch movies. Do they like to watch movies? Um, go on vacations, um, tell jokes, and so many other things to make us happy. But you know what? Happiness is just on the outside. Okay, if I told you I'm going to give every single person a candy cane, you'd be pretty happy, wouldn't you? Because that's something that's happening on the outside. So we're going to draw a smiley face here. Let's see. Okay, but the problem with happiness is if things around you aren't going well, you're not happy anymore. Like if I told you I'm going to take your candy cane back, you'd probably be kind of sad or maybe even upset at me for taking your candy cane back. Um, so now we're going to make a sad face over here. 
But that is both on the outside, right? But there's something even better than being happy, and it's called joy. And that's what our Advent candle was about this week. And the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And joy is something that comes from within. So I'm going to... Yes, ma'am. Hold on. I'm going to read us two Bible verses, and it says, So in this story, God has sent an angel to... Who are y'all dressed as today? Shepherds. Shepherds, yeah. So he sent an angel to the shepherds. And he says, the angel tells him, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So the angel came to tell the shepherds the most wonderful news ever, that the true joy had came into the world and that he had been born. So who, is, who are they talking about? Who are the angels telling him? Jesus. Yes, he had been born. But what's even cooler about this message is that he told them that the joy was for all the people, not just for the shepherds, right? He wanted them to tell everyone about Jesus. And for us today, we know that the true joy that we have in our hearts, um, because he loves and cares for us, that we can't help but spread this joy to others. And it just overflows from within us. So today I have a way to show us what happens when we have the joy inside us. Can you take that lid off? Okay, so we have this right here, and we're going to put the joy inside of us. We're going to add this, see what happens. Whoa! What is that happening? It It overflowed, didn't it? So that's what happens when we have the joy inside of us, right? So just like these bubbles have overflowed from within this vase, Jesus' joy can overflow from within our hearts. Yeah, and we can tell everyone we know about him. Will you all pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the joy we have in our hearts because of your son Jesus. Help us to share his joy with everyone we know. Amen. All right, you can go back and sit with your parents this morning. Oh. Whoopsie. <laughs> it's okay. Daddy. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a process. <laughs> I invite you to turn with me in our bulletins to the back where you'll see listed our prayers for the week. If you are worshiping with us online, we do send out our prayer and uh, praise list every week via email. If you are not getting those emails, um, please let us know and we can add you onto the list and make sure that, that you are up to date with what's going on in the life of the church. Um, I want to thank you all for your prayers yesterday as I ran my marathon. I definitely felt them and needed them. And especially want to thank Jim and Judy Bromley for being there to cheer me on. Um, It was a tough race because running in, uh uh-oh, there I am. Oh, gosh. And look at this. (laughs) This is the sign I saw when I was rounding up to the finish line. Thank you all. And uh, everyone always says, are you going to win? And I say, well, crossing the finish line is a huge win. I mean, um, it was tough. 
65 at the start in high humidity, probably 75 degrees by the time I finished. And for perspective, ideal temperature for running a marathon is between 45 and 50 degrees. So um, if you're on my Facebook, you saw my one picture. I laid down after the race and left, I call it my sweat angel. It was just wet pavement. It was really gross. <laughs> but that's a huge praise in my life. Um, another praise is uh, Knox Harden is here with us this morning. Knox, we're glad you're here. And I hear Charlie got another hole in one. You're just taking all the glory, aren't you? That's OK. <laughs> um, you'll see our prayer list. Doris Sellers had surgery uh, last week and asked for continued prayers for her. And I'd ask that you would add um, a couple names. There's Michael Malier for health. He's um, a friend of Debbie Angel's. And Oliver Tenenbaum is a newborn infant. He had, was born with a heart defect and is having surgery this week. Also, let's keep the people in Kentucky, especially in our prayers, uh, uh, terrible tornadoes that came through Friday night. Um, it's just the images are devastating for sure. Does anyone have any praises or prayers that you would like to have lifted up today? Okay, I think we're all ready to just pray and get on to the main show with the kids. So if you would, let us go to God together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for who you are. Lord, we thank you for the joy that you bring into our lives. We thank you that the joy that we have comes from deep within and comes from you, that it's not dependent on our circumstances. And Lord, we're so thankful for this opportunity to gather in person and online to hear our children as they share your message with us today. God, as we gather as your children, we come with these prayer requests. We ask that you would especially be with those who are, um, who are sick today, those who are recovering, and those who are facing surgery and procedures in the upcoming days. We pray that your healing touch would be on them. God, we lift up to you all of our other prayer requests. We pray that you would pour out your spirit on us, that during this season of Advent, you would help us to open our hearts to whatever you would have for us to receive. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite our children to come forward and get in your places. They have been working hard all fall on their, their pageant, and we are so looking forward to hearing you guys. Come on up.
Welcome to our Christmas celebration. The most wonderful story ever told. And we simple shepherds, we are so blessed to be a part of this story. Who would ever thought that we were mere keepers of sheep? Will we be the first to meet the greatest shepherd of all? But as amazing as it seems, we were the first one to meet him. It all began one night. We all gathered around our campfire, and we were settling down for well for some well-needed rest. But we never lost sight of our sheep. We were shepherds keeping watch over our flocks at night. I close my eyes and gently rest. Suddenly, just as we had fallen to sleep, we were awakened by a noise. It was music, the most beautiful music we had ever heard. A bright light appeared above our heads. It was an angel of the Lord. We were terrified. We fell to the ground and hid our faces. The glory of the Lord shone around us. What, is this, what could this messenger from heaven need with mere shepherds? Then we heard the angel begin to speak.
And the angel said to us, do not be afraid. I bring you good, I, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Let, this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Jesus, our Savior, was lying in a manger nearby Bethlehem. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. The angels sang beautiful praises to God. This music from heaven was glorious. When the angels left us and had gone back to heaven, we said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. What? 
So we hurried off to Bethlehem. We could not wait to see our newborn king. We could not wait to worship him. We could not wait to meet Jesus. So we hurried off to Bethlehem. We found Mary and Joseph. And the baby who was laying in the manger. We knew the moment we met Jesus, he was special. He was, we knew he was special. He would change the world. have seen him we knew that we had to spread the news we knew that that this was a special child and we also knew others should know him too we gave god all the glory we have seen and we praise god for all we have heard we were amazed that all the angels told us that was true we just met jesus and joy was now on earth
What a great story we have shared with you. Meeting Jesus was the best moment in our lives. He changed us forever. Do you know Jesus? Does he live in your heart? If you have never met our King, you should do it now. Just open your heart and he will come in. And he will make your life brand new just like he did ours. This Christmas, remember our shepherd's story and open your heart to the best gift you can ever receive. Jesus. do a wonderful job. Let's give them another round of applause. And thank you to Miss Rebecca for all your work with the little people. <laughs> and what can I say other than God is good. All and all the time, God is good. As we uh, wrap up our time of worship, I remind you that part of our worship is the giving of ourselves, and we do that in a lot of different ways, through our time, our talents, our gifts, and our service. The children have shared their talents with us today, and we give thanks to God for that. Um, and we do this morning have our offering box available in the narthex. You can continue to give through text message and give online. Um, but let us listen to these words from Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
we go forth from this place, may the joy of Christ be with you now and always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.